the impact is like both on a very local level, for example, at a farmer's field, but it's also on the on the overall global food market or or trading market of, of food. So so when we have variability in, in rainfall and too much or too little, we get less yield than a normal year or near normal year. And the quality in the terms of nutrition is decreased. Country. But on the global market, we might have like a drought in one place and then we have a drought in another place. And then we have a compound of events on our food producing areas in the world and then prices on the world market for for that food produce is is going up yeah so one way one way of of trying to adapt to this variability of rainfall is try to to buffer the water and look take care of the water and the first thing to do is of course to make sure the water infiltrates into the soil so you've got to have a good soil health and the second thing is of course you can have small storage or storage facilities yes. that can capture and store your water so you can access your water and the third thing is of course that some of your infiltration water either from from the ground or from from your tanks it might infiltrate down and recharge your, your shallow groundwater and these structures need to be implemented you can call them nature-based solutions because they work with nature their emphasis the natural uh, way that rainfall enters the soil and the ground and the streams and so it's a, it's an economic interest by the farmer you can get more by irrigating but on a country level of course irrigation can be a very critical supply and and in some parts of the world of of course you couldn't supply all the food for the population without irrigation for example india china and, and many other countries um, the food security would be seriously uh, reduced if you don't have irrigation systems to provide that food. Beginning of 1980s, there was big droughts in parts of Africa. After 1984, 85, there was a lot of investment in certain parts in small reservoirs, uh, in in West Africa, for example, and but also in Southern Africa. In Australia, uh, farmers have always invested in small tanks and small and dams. Of course, if you have too much collection of water in the landscape unit, you can undermine some of the river ecosystem services or the infiltration to your shallow groundwater. So you have to have a balance. But overall, in many parts of the world, there is still an opportunity to, to develop and store water. And in some cases, like in semi-arid sub-Saharan Africa, there is really no options than to store water when you have a nine, nine month dry season. So, so in some cases, uh, there's been a, a, a sort of paradigm shift on how big, large dams and, and where to construct them and how it alters natural flood systems. You have to think of your purpose and, and what is your, your wish and the fact that water in some cases is really essential for rural people to even get clean and healthy water and, and to have that water to, to support their livelihoods. When we talk about sustainability, I think it's, a, it's like one thing is it's about economic, social as well as environmental sustainability aspects. And, and I think that uh, for irrigation to be sustainable for, from an economic perspective, it has to provide you that food security to, to the market or to, to the consumers, as well as provide an income to the farmer, of course. But then there is the social aspect that it, shouldn't, it should be an opportunity for, for different types of farmers, women farmers, youth, uh, other farmers, um, and, and technologies or opportunities shouldn't be limited to certain uh, types of farmers. And then, of course, the environmental aspects. There have to be some sort of boundaries like on water access and water use and making sure that when you irri develop irrigation, you also very often develop your fertilizer practices and pesticide uses and making sure that this is done to the best practices possible. The thing is, of course, that you're not over utilizing your water resources. On one hand, it's about like legislation and policies and strategies um, for, for making sure you get both uh, environmental, social and economic 
sustainable development. Uh, but market has a role because they they are ultimately driving the adoption. So they they have a uh, both uh, a role to play in giving farmer an income. So it's got to be fair to the farmer, of course, uh, and fair to mediate for the consumer. And the other thing the market has to do is to actually provide supplies to the irrigation. Uh, there is about five to seven percent of the cropland being irrigated in sub-Saharan Africa today, but there is still a great potential to increase both the area with water available sustainably and in particular, there is an opportunity to make current irrigation more sustainable and more efficient. Policy and strategies are changing to support farmers to actually develop. For example, in Ethiopia, they were um, cutting taxes on imported equipment to, to make it more accessible to farmers. But there is a recognition that food security is important and it's been elevated and one way to to secure food supply is to um, also develop their irrigation systems. If farmers have an opportunity to save money and to be more efficient and do less work and still earn more, more money they will do it. So I, I don't think that uh, our digital, digital remote sensing tools are really ready um, and high resolution to really serve smallholder farmers yet. Um, the resolution of the remote sensing that is openly accessible is still quite coarse for smallholder farmers' field sizes. Um, the other problem is that there is not really good soil data. There's still work to be done to, to help farmers access that kind of tools to really make good, smart, water efficient decisions in their irrigation scheduling. Mm -hmm.